We've talked about offense and how the players line up in their different positions. Now let's talk about defense when our boys are haven't got the ball. There are three basic defensive positions on defense, and they are defensive lineman, linebacker, and defensive back. First, let's talk about the lineman. Linemen play at the line of scrimmage directly across from the offensive line. They are identified here as defensive tackles, labeled DT, or defensive ends, labeled DE. Linebackers stand two to four yards behind the defensive line. They are identified as strong, middle, and weak linebackers. They're shown here as SLB for strong linebacker, and MLB for middle linebacker, and WLB for the weak linebacker. Now these titles don't have anything to do to the strength of the individual player. They're only an indication of the, the position of the linebacker in relationship to how the other uh, team lines up. Strong linebackers line up on the same side as the offensive tight end. Weak linebackers line up away from the offensive tight end. Now defensive backs can stand behind the linebackers or to the side of the line. Linebackers include cornerbacks shown here as CB and a strong safety shown as SS. You can see them lining up on the same side as offensive tight ends and a free safety linebacker is shown here as FS. So called because they are free to roam wherever they're needed. Cornerbacks are almost always responsible for defending against pass receivers. Safeties often defend receivers as well but they are usually positioned in the center of the field to be prepared to stop a run if that is what the offense decides to do. Now the rules regarding defensive formations are not as complex as they are for the offense. The de defense may line up anywhere on its side of the neutral zone, and players are free to move at any time before the ball is snapped but all defensive players must remain on their side of the neutral zone, which is defined as the width of the ball before the snap. If they line up on the wrong side of the line, the offending players will be called for offsides. Now let's learn two basic formations used in football. Let's start off with the 4-3. This is the basic defense of most teams. It consists of four defensive linemen, three linebackers, and four defensive backs, or two safety backs and two cornerbacks. When the offense or, or other team lines up with two receivers, this formation is effective against both the run and the pass. In the 4-3, the linemen tend to line up in the gaps between the offensive line. And on passing downs, the middle linebacker, is often responsible to cover any running backs. The strong side linebacker covers the tight end, and the weak side linebacker either covers an offensive running back carrying the ball or blitzes in an attempt to try to sack the quarterback. This is where the weak side linebacker runs as fast as he can through the line and tries to tackle the quarterback. This formation was invented by former Dallas Cowboys head coach Tom Landry while he was the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. The second formation is the 5-2 formation, which is commonly used in high schools. This consists of five defensive linemen, two linebackers, and four defensive backs, or two cornerbacks and two safeties. This formation is uh, best used to stop the run. But before we go, I'd like to mention the goal line defense. This is used on the goal line or in short yardage situations, like they might be third down and one yard to go. 
This is where the entire defense line, defensive line lines up close to the line of scrimmage in an attempt to stop an expected running play. It is usually used to counter a goal line offense. Since there's not more than 10 or 11 yards of field left, the safeties can be pulled in for more linemen or linebackers. However, if the offense puts some of their own receivers out to the side, our, off our defense may be forced to dedicate some of our defensive backs to guard against the other team from throwing a pass to one of their receivers, thus weakening our ability to stop the run. There are more formations than just these two or three. Clearly, the formation ideas are endless, bound only by the individual and collective abilities of a, of a defensive unit. More formations may be called for when a coach feels that his team is at a, at a particularly disadvantage due to the player matchups. So now you can see that the defense can play a little looser than the offense so they can adjust for whatever opposing team with the ball is up to. So now let's get back to the game today. 